All right, everyone, welcome to Side Talk. So today I have Carla Williams Johnson. She was episode number 166 of the Oh Hell No podcast. And um, we discussed her journey um, into her career um, and then into entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. She works in communications and she has her own company. Welcome to the Side Talk podcast, Carla. Thank you for having me once again. Clearly you <laughs> love me. <laughs> Absolutely, I do, girl. And she's also representing Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad so and big up. <laughs> that is my son. He's very mommy shock right now. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I didn't even hear him, but okay. <laughs> he's like he's like bawling. He's like, mommy, mommy. <laughs> girl. Listen, we, we know what goes on. Yeah, it, it's know. all part of the, it's all part of it. What can we yeah. do? <laughs> yeah. So how are things going in Trinidad? Because Trinidad is all over the news with this COVID craziness. Like all of a sudden now things are spiking in Trinidad. Yeah, it is. It's not great. I mean, we have had a huge spike within the last couple of weeks. We're currently on another lockdown, 100% lockdown, only essential and essential workers are allowed to be out. Um, everything, everything, everything um, from doubles go right back. And you know, we Trinis, like we can't live without our doubles. I don't know what's <laughs> going to happen. I heard the last day of lockdown, KFC was like ram packed because everybody needed to get their KFC before the lockdown. So it's <laughs> Yeah. I don't want to laugh, but it really is. No, I if you don't laugh, you cry. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. <laughs> it's just crazy. I it's like a no. Yeah. Well, we praying for you guys. We hope things get better quickly because you know, I know you guys need your doubles and <laughs> yeah, we do. I love some doubles too. Mm. <laughs> All right. So tonight on Side Talk, we are going to talk about mentorship, seeking mentorship, and how to avoid being duped, right? Because there are a lot of scammers out there. Yeah. And, um, you know, just going on social media, there are so many people talking about how they can help you, you know, be just like them, you know, turn your business into a six, seven figure business in, you know, a short time span. And, you know, all these things take my course and, you know, I'll make you rich. But um, we need to know what to invest our time and money into and what not to invest our time and money into. So yeah. I am very skeptical about um, stuff online. I remember when I first started um, my podcast, I met these young um, guys online who said that they could help me with some um, Facebook ads and, you know, stuff like that for the podcast just to promote it. And I said, okay, I'll give it a go. You know, what do I have to lose? It wasn't a lot of money. I think I spent like 200 and change, you know, which it's not a lot um, in the grand scheme of things when you're paying for marketing, because marketing is very expensive, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I figured, you know, I'll give, give them a chance. They're trying to like build up their reputation in their business and I'm starting a podcast about people following their passions and stuff like that so you know why not yeah girl they um was supposed to be running an ad for me if you saw that ad <laughs> <laughs> you would have wanted to slap everybody <laughs> I wanted to bang both their heads together because I was like what is this you need to fix this this looks horrible it was just a bad experience from the first ad. Um, I don't even think they got a chance to run a second ad because they just, and they were supposed to be like so experienced, you know, but it just looked so unprofessional. It didn't, you know, like represent what I was trying to do. And it was a really bad experience. Mm -hmm. And I lost most of my money, um, but that scared me and made me like not want to trust people on the internet you know? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. being in the 
communications field, you know, you are a knowledgeable expert in the field. One, how do you differentiate your differentiate yourself from the potential scammers? You know, what do you do to um, represent your brand authentically so that people feel comfortable investing their money with you? Mm -hmm. And what are your thoughts on, um, you know, all the stuff that's out there and how you can kind of navigate that when you're trying to invest in yourself and your business? Wow. So that's a lot to unpack. <laughs> it is. It is. And I'll, I'll start by saying that, I mean, we have all been duped. Um, sometimes people just speak our language and they just know, they just know what to say. And we get so sucked in that there are like glaring red flags that we totally ignore and we go full in trying to, you know, make sense out of this investment, knowing fully well it's not going to bring us anything. And I think another thing with some people, I mean, it's not with you in this example, but I know with some people, depending on who it is, they don't want to say no. Maybe it's a friend maybe it's somebody that they trusted. They don't want to say no when they get in and they don't want to take, you know, they don't want to back out because they don't want to hurt this person's feelings or whatever the situation would be. So what sets me apart is that I care. I actually do. I actually want to see people succeed. I mean, people say that, but at the end of the day, it's all about, can you cut me this check? And I remember having a conversation with my boyfriend just last week and I said to him I said I don't understand how people could invest in a marketing expert and that marketing expert does not support them I support all my clients I buy their products I invest in their services I encourage people to invest in their products and services I promote them without even um taking money for this this is just you know tagging them on social media and and to me, that means that I believe in your product. It's not about me just doing this for you and collecting a check at the end of it. It's about, I want to see you succeed. And I believe that I am investing money outside of what you're paying me back into the business. And there are people that don't do that. I find that is amazing. And I think that is a first red flag. If you have a food company and you hire a marketing company and that marketing company ain't come by you once to buy lunch, you have a problem. Because if you are marketing somebody's product or service, you have to believe in their product or service first, right? When it comes to me as well, another thing that I do, I, I love social media. I think mm -hmm. it's a useful tool, but I think that because so people just know how to use social media effectively, you can fool a lot of people. So you see people by the pool and with their private chat mm -hmm. and their jet setting around the world. And you think, oh my God, you know, I want to be living that life. You know, they're probably in debt. You know, it's probably somebody's home that they're taking pictures of, but they know how to make it look so great that they pull you in. And you have to be very clear about, does this make sense? Does this... Is this the life you want to live or is this the life that they are just showing you that making you feel like you want to live it? Some, I mean, some of us don't really want to jet set around the world. Some of us don't really want a pool in the backyard. We just want to live a comfortable life, right? right. So I want to stop right there. First of all, the first thing that you said was so good. <laughs> like I have never even heard anyone say that before. <laughs> Crazy and that me. is facts it's, what you just said it, it, but it's crazy to me I remember telling my boyfriend that and I was like I don't know how people could be marketing for a company and don't buy from them yeah it's amazing to me it's oh, it mm -hmm. goes over my head goes over my head even yeah. if it, you are paying me like I have had so many clients I mean, I have people that are not even my clients. They're just my colleagues and I want to see them succeed. And they bring out a book. I bought it. They bring out a diary. I bought it. They brought out their business. I bought it. And I encourage people to do the same because I believe in you. I yes. believe in you. 
And it makes your job so much more enjoyable and easier because you are helping to promote someone that you truly connect with and want to see succeed because you believe in what they're doing. Right. So boom, that's number one, guys. Gem (laughs) number one. If your person, your mentor, the person that you're working with is not interested in your services, your product, that's a red flag. It is. And sometimes someone is doing something that you might not be interested in per se like okay I I sell makeup right by the way guys this episode is brought to you by Bent Beauty I'm wearing the love lipstick <laughs> I, I need that though I do but go ahead and right okay and there my, I have um friends that don't wear makeup right they just don't I don't know why girl I've been trying to figure it out but I don't know why okay <laughs> And, but she has supported my business by buying things for people in her life from my business that do wear makeup, that do enjoy wearing it, you know? So just because you don't, maybe you don't use bath products and you're representing someone who sells bath products, give a gift, just support however you can, you know? So I hate when people say, oh, I don't really use that, though. Oh, I don't really read books. Mm, I don't really, you know, buy a book from somebody for somebody else. Exactly. What what will it hurt? What will it hurt? Right. Okay. So that, as you said, that is gem number one. I I just I clearly I am different. Clearly I am different. Right. Mm -hmm. In that statement alone. In a good way. In a good way. So the next thing you touched on, right, about the. Jet setting life. Yes, the people taking pictures. I am so sick of it, Carla. I cannot take it. I know. It's so know. sickening. Like, seriously, like people. And if you on. have to use that to get me to buy from you, that's red flag number two, as mm-hmm. far as I'm concerned, because that's trying to show me a life that very few people can live or want. And you're trying to put something in front of me that you're telling me is attainable, but you know very well that I'm not going to get that life. You are using me to get that life, but I'm not going to get that life from you. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. So (laughs) (laughs) yes, they are using us to have, to have that life that they're you know, whatever the facade of that life or whatever, right? Because we're paying them to help us live like that. But nine times out of 10, we probably won't, right? And I find it interesting because like you said, not everybody wants to live like that. You know, some people want to have a thriving business and they want to put their time and energy and money into growing their business and just doing different things, maybe giving back, maybe, you know, just being comfortable, being able to pay their bills every month and being able to save and and have a little extra and vacation with their families, you know, in a normal vacation setting, not, it doesn't have to be Bora Bora or, you know, some exotic place like that. So again, what are you really selling when you're renting a private jet time from a private jet so you could take pictures on it with your family and sh- you know like what what how is that going to help me sell exactly. more lipstick exactly exactly i hate and I, it and i think last but not least anyone that does not have that pr backing you know that they they live on social media and they use social media but they don't have any endorsements from the media they haven't been published anywhere they haven't been featured anywhere They haven't gotten that third party credibility. Mm -hmm. That is something to watch. Because if you're Insta famous, as they say, or Facebook famous alone, but you don't have that endorsement from, let's say, a Forbes or an Inc or an Entrepreneur Magazine or whatever, you need to be very mindful. Because anybody with an internet connection and a device can call themselves an expert. Anybody can do that. But you can't fake an endorsement from a media hub. No, guys. And Carla has that. Check her credits, people. (laughs) She has that. So, yes, I agree. I think that um, a lot of people, one time I went to this um, 
the one time I ventured out and I went to PodFest and PodFest was amazing. I loved it. Shout out to the PodFest family. Um, and they had a speaker and he basically said that um, on social media, you can create whatever persona you want, right? Who's going to know? <laughs> exactly. Who's going to know? Right? So if you want to, if I want to portray like this big podcaster who's like, has a top show, if I present myself like that on social media, and I'm always trying to photograph myself with people who might be of a certain, you know, stature or whatever. I'm always out. I'm at the trendiest restaurants. I'm carrying all this designer stuff all the time. You see me, you know, maybe on a red carpet. It might not even be at a real event, right? But I'm just taking pictures and, you know, you're going to think, oh my God, oh hell no. That must be like a really, she must be like a really big deal, right? So you're going to want to, get to know me or associate yourself with me somehow some way and if that means spending with you because that's that that is the ultimatum right they don't bring you into their world unless you pay them right right yes. so that's how you get to meet the person or work with the person and then you get in and you realize it, it was not real yeah nothing that they said was real because you're not getting any you know, you're not getting any information. You're not getting any insurance in terms of, sorry, not insurance, assurance that, you know, you made the right decision many times. I mean, I've been there. I have wasted hundreds of thousands of dollars. So please so, share a story, Carla. We want to hear. I we will not be calling any names. Okay. But I love cults. Right. I watch Investigation Discovery and I love how cults are made up. And I always said to myself, how can people fall into a cult? It's so crazy. Until I got into an actual online virtual marketing cult. And let me tell you how it started. Mm. The person was charismatic. She said everything that I needed to hear. She, I mean, she got into my psyche. She understood I was struggling. She understood, she understood what the struggles were. She gave me just enough information that I can put things into practice and, and, um, you know, build my business and see some momentum and get some traction and stuff. And then I said, you know what, if she's giving me this for free, which is one of the things she said, imagine what would be what it would be like if you were to pay for the program so i took the bait and i paid for the program while we in the program there were certain mantras you do whatever she says to do that 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 was that was just a mantra that and that was something that you had to repeat over and over like a cult Mm -mm. You could not go against the leader. If you had a mind of your own and you said, you know what, I don't think, I, I think I want to, you know, do this other way. They will not actually say it, but they will make you feel like you're doing the wrong thing. If you said you wanted to leave, they would make you feel like you're lost. Like if you leave that, you know, your whole business would just fall apart. Um, you can't say anything negative. It was a real life cult. And it was only after me and a few other ladies got out of this cult that we realized that we were in one. This person was taking our money and not doing anything with it other than jet setting around the place with her husband and her children, taking um, you know photos on private jets, buying all these wonderful clothes and stuff. And to validate that I was 100% right, when this pandemic hit, she's a marketing expert. As a marketing expert, people are coming to you for help because they don't know what to do, right? They didn't know what to do before the pandemic. So worse yet, now they're, they're lost. And she just evaporated. The whole program just evaporated. I mean, she tried other little things. She's no longer into marketing. She's more into um helping people develop the confidence to move forward and stuff like that so she's changed her messaging but that's because her messaging was built on sand because all this she just knew how to speak she was a great marketer i, I give her that hands down i give i give her that but i was paying like a thousand us a month 
And I did that for like two years. Oh my God. Yes. For about two years, I did that. I mean, I could have bought a house. <laughs> that's, that's really yes, it, right? that's crazy. And mm-hmm. every time you decide, you know, I don't want to leave. She comes with some new gimmick, something to make you feel like you need to stay. She made you feel like, you know, you can't say anything negative to get out. If you are in a company, in the company or something like that, if you are in a place where you feel like you can't leave because you'll be lost, if you can't think for yourself and your business, because not, not even the best expert could tell you what you think is right for your business, right? Then you're in a cult and you need to get out because I was in one, right? You need to get out. And it was only after I left that, you know, things started to move. Things started to soar. I was lighter. I was, you know, I was, you know, out how much of a thousands of dollars, but, you know, things started to move. And one of the things I find is amazing. She was all about digital. She was all about, you know, getting online and everything. And I always used to say, You need an integrated approach to everything and you need to include PR because PR gives you credibility. Apparently she's been following me because all of a sudden she's on this whole credibility PR thing. She, you know, she's getting features all over, but you know, she took all of our money so she can afford to pay for the best to get these things. Right. Right. So, I mean, it happens to the best. And that's just one. There are many other stories like it, right? That's just one. But my point is sometimes people just know what to say to you, but you have to not let your emotions make that decision for you. Sometimes your head has to get into it and says, does this make logical sense? If this program is supposed to get me from here to there and it hasn't gotten me there in three months, what's going to happen later on? Am I still going to continue to invest or do I cut my losses and leave? Because three months, I would have been happy to leave. Two years is a very long time to not make that ascent that I invested. That's crazy. So what are your thoughts on programs that offer money back guarantee? Do you think that those programs are more credible because you can get your money back? Or do you think that you should always find out the details of the money back guarantee because there might be loopholes. Definitely get the information because there are a lot of loopholes. You know, they will say things you have to be in for a certain time. You have to prove to them that you were putting in the work. There are a lot of different things that they put as, um, you know, these, 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 what do you call them? These, um, stipulations stipulations around the money back guarantee and then also you need to do some research not because somebody sounds great means that they're great for you some people just want to sell their product or service and they don't care who they sell it to and they know you may not be a good fit but you're willing to pay so they'll take it that has that happened to me already and i try to to get out of that and i mean that didn't work either i said i spent a whole year in that mess but my point is you have to do some research and that can look like talking to somebody who has been in the program, who did not drink the Kool-Aid, who could tell you exactly what it's like. That looks like research for yourself. What are, what are some of the things that they're teaching? Do you actually need it in your business? Sometimes we panic buying our business, right? Somebody says, oh, you need to be on LinkedIn. So I I run and I get a LinkedIn course or you need to be on Instagram and I run and get an Instagram post. But do you actually need to be there, right? Panic buying is real in business and you don't need to, you need to kind of make sense of things before you invest your money. Yeah, that's great advice because yeah, people can panic buy. That is true. Um, It's like one time I saw this advertisement on Facebook or Instagram and the girl was saying that she had a business that was struggling and she um, got with this, um, you know, marketing company that has turned her business into this, that and the third and they're really good. So I reached out to the marketing company and, um, you know, they we, we talked and they did some basic, you know, uh, 
you know, estimation or, you know, evaluation of my business or whatever. And um, they told me their price. Mm -hmm. Um, It was crazy AF. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So I was like, okay, I cannot afford that. And I'm not going to do anything to afford that. You know, because sometimes people rob Peter to pay Paul and all yeah. this foolishness, that right? Happens. Because they think, oh, my God, I'm going to make this money, right? Mm-hmm. But what happens if you don't? Then you're screwed. So I reached out to the girl who, you know, made the commercial. Like, maybe if I DM her and ask her, hey, did this program really work for you? You know, you would think that she making a commercial, she would respond, right? She never did. Yeah, that's the research that you need to do if it is legit, if it's a bot, if it's, you know, someone that they paid, like, you really have to do your research in these internet streets because people do and say anything to get your money, anything Mm -hmm. at all. And you really have to be clear on what you need. Because another thing is that you may buy a product or service that's not right for you. Not that it's not good. It's not right for you, but you already invested it. What can you do? You just have to go through an emotion. And, you know, making a mistake in business is inevitable. It's inevitable. You will make mistakes, but you Mm -hmm. don't want to make these expensive mistakes that you have to carry around for the rest of your life. I mean, money, I wouldn't say it's hard to come by, but you worked hard to make that money, to just give it to somebody else just because, they said the right words or they did the right thing. That's not fair and that's not right. And that's that's one of the reasons why I'm still in business. I said to myself, you know, these people, they don't suffer from imposter syndrome. They don't suffer from any of these things that we good people suffer from. They're just swooping and taking money and they go, right? Mm-hmm. While, I'm, while we are trying to figure out if we should, they already did and moved on right and I feel like it's my job to save people from those swoopers right Mm -hmm. because they don't care they don't care as long as they get your dollar they don't care on to the next one meanwhile you're struggling and you're building a business and you're not happy and passionate about it again you're not, and, and that to me is the worst part because you, 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 you didn't get into entrepreneurship to, you know, be sad and frustrated and angry and stressed out all the time. You're going to, I mean, you know, it's hard work, but you, but you want it to be a, a nice flowing process and that's how it should be. But these people, they make it so hard. They make yep. it so difficult. They surely do. And, um, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I do that. No, it's okay. Cause I just was thinking and then I, I, I totally forgot, but yeah, they, um, they really do make it hard. And I think that you're hitting on a lot of good points that you really, sometimes they do offer things that are not for you. So you have to make sure that you know what you're looking for and what you're willing to, you know, try and, and you know, what, what you, what totally does not make sense for your business and what you're willing to try. So you need to yeah. listen, pick the sense out of the nonsense and don't jump in to every situation. But yeah. Yeah. Don't throw money at the problem, figure out what the problem is and then decide on the right solution to the problem. Not because right. something sounds nice or looks nice. You need to jump in. Right. So, um, I really think that like, like Carla said, you are going to make mistakes in your business, but um, you want to make the right mistakes if there's any such thing, right? You don't want to make too many mistakes where you get burnt out and jaded about the whole yeah. entrepreneur, you know, lifestyle or situation. Mm-hmm. So um, we don't want to discourage you from, you know, finding a mentor or, um, you know, going into um, programs that are designed to help you, you know, stay disciplined and, and get to your goal, you know, using, um, you know, coaches could be a good thing depending on where your struggles are, you know, but you want to make sure that you interview 
um, you know, the coach talk, find out about, you know, the programs that they went through to become a coach, find out what areas they specifically focus on, you know, and then look at yourself and think about who you are. You have to be very self-aware before you can hire someone to help you with your business, Indeed. right? Because if you know your struggles, your areas where you have a lot of, um, where you need help, then you'll be able to, you know, relay that to somebody else and say, these are the areas where I struggle, you know, I'm not good at this, or this takes me a long time, or I'm not seeing traction here. And then you can find something that works for you, right? Mm -hmm. Agreed. Totally agreed. So I definitely think those are some things that you want to make sure. And then just not looking for a fast, quick fix. Because one thing that I've learned from all the people that I've interviewed, I always ask them about these um, microwavable programs that are designed to um, oh, I can turn your business into this. I have the blueprint. I did it for my business. Those things are tricky because every business is different. Yeah. Right. So you can't really apply somebody else's blueprint to your business because your business might be different. It might need a different blueprint. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? I'm happy you touched on that because that is a real problem as well. If your coach is not willing to listen to you and what it is you're going through and get an idea of your business and they just want to shove this blueprint at you and say, just do this and you make money, that is another red flag because every market, every business, every, every business owner is different. They, everybody's different. There's some people who just don't do videos and it's just not going to work for them, right? Some people don't need to be on social media. So if somebody's shoving this blueprint in your face, mm -mm. yeah, you find someone that would listen to what it is that you really are going through and what you really need. Yeah, I I sat in, um, there was this thing online and it talked about, um, you know, helping you uh, get more um, engagement on social media, because I struggle with that for my podcast, right? Because I'm just not Miss Fabulous on social media all the time, like, dude, that's just not me. I'm not. <laughs> so I struggle with that, right? So I saw something and it said, you know, come to this class and you'll learn some tricks to, you know, so I'm always up to learn some tricks or whatever. So they talked about um, their business is totally different from mine. Mm -hmm. And um, they talked about a blueprint that they used to gain followers and, you know, become like this big deal, or whatever. And um, then he talked about how he used the same blueprint and applied it to his girlfriend's business where she sells water bottles. And they show like some of her, you know, profile and it's all like lifestyle mm -hmm. driven, you know, mm -hmm. like, look at my water bottle, but my boobs are kind of out, you know, <laughs> like, mm, that's I, not lifestyle. That's something completely right. different. Go ahead. I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening. You know what I mean though? Like. Yeah. I look so fabulous with my cool water bottle. I'm at the pool. Um, you know, my makeup is so perfect. I'm so pretty. That kind of thing, right? I'm not selling that. I'm not selling nothing, okay? The Oh Hell No podcast is a podcast that exists to motivate, empower, and educate you on various subjects so that you will get out of whatever slump you're in and make changes based on information that you received in this podcast to follow your passions and do what you're dying to do. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm hoping that someone's story resonates with you and helps you to light that fire so that you can do what you want to do before you leave this earth. Agreed. Right. That's what my podcast is about. I can't make that look pretty. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Well, 
I don't think pretty is what you want it to look like. Right, but that's what I'm saying. But that's the blueprint. The The blueprint blueprint is, you know, this great social media page that looks a certain way. And I'm sure maybe they will tell you to tailor it for whatever. But everything that they were talking seems to be around this imagery that you want people to see and you know it's attractive to people yeah Yeah. I'm like this is like not what you know I don't think this is for me like I don't you know I can't commit to this right and I'm happy you realized that it was not for you but there is someone who would have been cool and who would have purchased and would have tried it and it would not have worked for them because they were handed this blueprint that was not for them. Right. It just wasn't, it just wasn't for and them. you know what the red flag was for me was that they said that this is not their business. Like it's not our business to help people gain followers and, and get more um, notability and traction and things like that. That's not our business. Our business is X, Y, Z. I don't want to call their name. So I'm not, you know, our business is this, mm-hmm. but for 1999, you know, <laughs> it's going to be our business. You know what I mean? Like, and it was not 1999, like $19 in 99. Oh. Right? It was like, you know, an expensive program that they're telling you that this is not their business and they're not, you know, this is not what they do, but you know, it's worked so great for us. We thought we'd share it with you and this, it'll just cost you this. Yeah. No, no, no. So that, that I didn't like that. I I just don't, I I can't. So Yeah. 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 And this is why you need to do your research, people. I mean, the red flags are glaringly obvious if you look with your mind and not with your heart. I mean, I know it's hard. It's very hard, right? Because marketing, good marketers, they market to emotion. They build everything on emotion. So I know it's kind of hard, but sometimes you really need to put your mind into things and think, is Mm -hmm. this actually making sense? And yeah. if it doesn't get out or, you know, step back a little bit, you know, step away from it for a while and, and observe and see, right? Because sometimes, you know, other people would get into it. I mean, and that's one of the things, right? To learn from other people's mistakes. Somebody else might get into it and they might tell you, you know, it's not right. Yeah. And another thing is you really need to trust your intuition. I mean, mm-hmm. your gut never lies. Your, your heart might be saying, you need to go, you need to go, but your gut is saying, Mm-mm. always trust your gut. It never feels you. Never. Yes. And if it feels a little funky, it might be Fair funky. Way. It might be funky for you, right? Yeah. So like Carla said, it might not be the thing for you to do. Mm-hmm. So Carla also um, is a co-host on a podcast called Shut Up and Listen. And they give very great advice on that podcast about marketing, communications, and entrepreneurship, all types of things. So check out her podcast because um, you might get some tips there (laughs) (laughs) that you can use. We always give great tips and great advice. And we recently started bringing on some experts. Um, We had a mindset expert. She was excellent, Chris O'Daniel. Um, we had um, someone that dealt with content creation and content strategy. Oh, she was excellent. So tune in to Shut Up and Listen, right? The podcast. And you can check it out. Actually, if you go to my Instagram page, I actually have a link in the bio that has access to all, every single one of those episodes. Nice. All right. Well, Carla, thank you so much for coming on Side Talk to chop it up about this hot topic because I feel like it is really a hot topic. So many people are venturing into entrepreneurship and I think it's a mixture of all of the social media postings about how great it is to be an entrepreneur and work for yourself and and make it rain money. But in reality, being an entrepreneur is the furthest 
thing from that. Like it's just, it's not. It is. It really is. It's yeah. hard work, but I mean, it's it's. I don't know. It's a roller coaster, right? So yes, it's hard work, but we love it, right? Mm-hmm. It's not. Oh, I'm working for myself, and I can do whatever I want when I want. No, it 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 doesn't work that way. No, and I I am a part time entrepreneur. I am not like Carla, right? She is, that's her bread and butter. That is, she works for herself and she employs others. I have a, I'm a bootstrapping entrepreneur who has a small little, you know, side venture that I'm trying to, you know, develop into something, um, you know, that I can be proud of and that does well, right? But it it takes a lot of work. Nothing happens overnight. It's up and down. And anything that is promising you overnight success, it's probably not. It is. It, 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 it's not going to happen like that. It really isn't. Yeah. And if anyone says to you, it's easy, run. Because it's not easy either. Yeah. It's a lot of work. It's not. So... <laughs> I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode and I hope that you learned something from it. Um, Thank you for tuning in and I will talk to you guys later on the next Side Talk episode.